funny to see how uh, all of us, you know, we have our iPhones always looking for Wi-Fi connections to try getting the last uh, uh, news report, the, the last uh, news flash. And as I get my uh, my Wi-Fi connection, the first thing I see how there's another rocket attack towards southern Israel uh, three days ago. And then again, I got arrived to San Francisco airport, I got another, another bulletin, how there's a, sorry, a false alarm going off in Be'er Sheva, the capital of the Negev, which is around 200,000 Israeli, Israelis wanting for their lives, even though, again, no injuries, no harm done, it's still people wanting for their lives. And overall, this has been uh, the experience. For me, when I leave the country, I, I get a perspective upon myself, what I've been through these past uh, almost uh, seven years dealing and working in this kind of environment. As I'm falling asleep on the plane, <laughs> I have the stewardess calling off on the microphone, you know, the, the, the sound of like that. So automatically uh, wake up uh, you know, with, with my heart uh, <laughs> pounding pretty strongly because it's, cause I'm very used to when you have a going off like this in steroids, you know that the siren is about to go off and you have like 15 seconds literally to run for your life. That was just an uh, introduction, I guess, uh, by me uh, coming here to the States. Um, if I, if I you know, start all the world from, from the beginning is showing, I love using this controversial political map in front of diplomats and foreign press, getting a better understanding of what we're up against today. I use this map to show you where the world is located, which is right over here. Okay, it's a 45 minute drive to Tel Aviv, more or less, the center of Israel, an hour and 15 to Jerusalem. Stay road in the whole Western Negev region has been under rocket fire. For the past, uh, this past October, in our 14th year, According to the sterile security office, there's been over 25,000 rockets been fired towards Israel. Since the disengagement, since the Israel folding out from the Gaza Strip, was a critical point. What's it called modern history right now? It's amazing that people do not even realize about that aspect. Uh, when we explain what happened in August 2005, is to explain to people how Israel is the only country in modern history that ever gave land for peace after winning a war. Since that point until today, it's been, over, it's been more or less 20,000 rockets being fired towards Israel. And then we have the Iran factor in Israel's backyard, the missile trickling, how far does it actually reach? I think the hardest thing to get across to people living here one mile away from the Gaza Strip, it just means that once a rocket is being fired from Gaza towards the north of the entire Western Negev, we have more or less 15 seconds or, that, or less to run for lives. Now, how the heck do you get across to people having 15 seconds? What can you possibly do? Just imagine, okay, if it's sitting like this in the classroom having a siren going off, you expect to run through the corridors with 80 other students and hoping to reach a secure room through less than 15 seconds. This somehow became a daily routine life in this part of the region for the past, as I said, entering our 14th year, or less almost every other day uh, uh, on the news broadcast. Even if I start by, by saying, being here on the other side of the world, asking you guys, how do you guys get information about Israel? about the conflict. What would you guys tell me? Very good cool question. I-24. Okay, I-24. That's a nice uh, answer. Yeah? Howard Sheva. Howard Sheva, okay. Anybody else? Well, I'm trying to express, uh, to explain for a second. You think about it for a second, being on the other side of the world, what we know today is what we hear, see, and read through media elements. This is usually our perspective outside of reality, <coughs> most of the bubble. I can tell you that the, the daily news broadcast in Israel Okay, the past seven, eight years, more or less, almost every other day, are mentioning how two Qassam rockets, that's the name of the rocket, how two Qassam rockets, selling by their rocks, no injuries, no harm done, maybe two people treated for shock, into the weather report. And the question is, first of all, can anybody grasp the meaning of, you know, shock or anxiety or trauma for listening to that news broadcast or watching it on television news? That whole human side of the story is not mentioned or understood through media elements, and this became a challenge to try expressing this very unique rocket reality. I'll be showing how unique this actually is. More than that, what's been happening out by the region impacts many other regions around the world, all the way over here. And that's the next challenge. Even before you want to go, so let me try expressing and showing to you a video called 15 Seconds. This video is by the way, if you guys go to YouTube and just write 15 seconds on YouTube, this is the first video that comes up. I mean, they were able to get across this concept of 15 seconds. Be seeing here live footage, live documentation by living in Zdevok and documenting live scenes being under rocket fire. It was the first day of school. A couple of years ago, we documented the children, asking them, how's it to be going back to school? We knew the sun was going to be happening that morning on the way to school. 
We had a siren going off, followed by like seven explosions into the town. And we literally filmed the children running for their lives into the school itself. This footage was broadcast around the world from Fox News and CNN. And even in Israel, even in Israel, the first time the newspapers wrote about what does it mean to have 15 seconds or less to run for your life. So I'll start with this video, and the purpose of this video is to shock the audience and show them how intense this can actually get every single time having a siren going off, followed by an explosion. 